Welcome back to the news today. This is one on one. In the modern world uh, with modern technology, it is easier to send a message to crowds that only a few years ago were out of reach. Part of the Israel's public relations efforts are geared towards the Arab world, trying to show the main points of belief of the Jewish state to a crowd that is mostly one sided, to understand the way that Israel is trying to present itself to the Arab world is uh, with me right now is Ophir Gendelman, director of Arab media at the Israeli prime minister's office. Thank you very much for coming My to pleasure. the studio. So how, from where do you start to explain to the Arab world Israel and Judaism? Well, I think, first of all, there is tremendous interest in the Arab world when it comes to Israel. Actually, the Arab world is obsessed with Israel. It always has been. So every day you have, I don't know how many dozens of pieces about Israel, what's happening inside Israel. Israeli media is, is translated into Arabic, and they're very much interested in, in what we have to say. So as the Prime Minister spoke to the Arab world, my job is to convey the Prime Minister's views and policies in Arabic directly to uh, the Arab living rooms. So when, let's start with the reactions that you're getting before yeah. I will continue. What are the reactions that you're getting from the Arab Well, mixed. To be uh, truthful, it's mixed. Uh, some are positive, surprisingly. Some are, are, of course, negative. But people are interested in what we have to say. And, you know, we go, I go on air on Al Jazeera, Al Arabiya, Al Hora, BBC Arabic. So every interview has an audience or a target audience of 30, 40, 50 million people. So we are able today to reach basically everyone. Uh, in the past, there has been a boycott on Israel in Arab media. It's still true in some areas, in some countries. But the major networks uh, interview Israelis as a policy. So it's very easy for us to actually convey the message. So uh, the positive, you said that posit you get positive re reactions, uh, for example, from where? Everywhere. Uh, starting from Morocco till Iraq, I get, you know, on Twitter on Facebook, um, uh, posts from people who are saying, uh, we love Israel, we're interested in what Israel has to offer. We want to visit Israel, we want to study in Israel, we want to work in Israel, what can you do for us? So it's interesting, you know, they know that they have been fed propaganda for 65 years, they know that. So It's amazing what you're saying, because uh, if you will ask maybe the common Israeli society, they will tell you, all oh, our world hates us, they don't understand us, they want to send us all to the sea in one package, <laughs> and you know, just close the deal on Israel. Well, uh, to be truthful again, this is mostly true. The animosity towards Israel is unbelievable. As someone who, who knows Arabic, you know, I read uh, talkbacks and, and posts on Twitter and, and Facebook, and I know what people think, and the hatred towards Israel is unbelievable. Uh, it's racist, it's anti-Semitic, it's not only political driven. But uh, nonetheless, they're interested in what we have to say. And after all, we are a part of the region. Uh, they are interested in what Israel has to say, but in order uh, maybe to get their interests, Israel needs to understand exactly. the region uh, very good and to understand the culture. And this Absolutely. is, of course, a fact, uh, what I'm going to say here, that most Israelis don't understand Arabic. Most Israelis, unfortunately, don't understand the region and, of course, don't understand the culture, which is totally different. Absolutely. It's, it's true, and it is unfortunate. You know, there aren't too many Israelis who speak fluent Arabic, unfortunately. You know, if I could use this uh, platform here, I, I would like to be an ambassador for, <laughs> for Arabic. Go and study Arabic. Israelis, just go and study Arabic. You'll understand the region so much better. And you're right about what you said. It's not enough to know Arabic. You have to know Arabs. You have to know what works. You have to know which me message uh, will resonate with the Arab public opinion. So it's not um, uh, translating into Arabic a message that goes out to the American public. You have to tailor make everything to suit the Arab uh, audience. You, I know that you're working for the Prime Minister's office, and it won't be fair to ask you this question, but I am going to ask you this question. Good. Do you think that the Prime Minister understands the culture, understands the region, understands Absolutely. that what he's dealing with is something totally else than Israelis and Americans, for example? Well, first, I'm the first ever spokesperson for 
any given prime minister in Israel. Prime Minister Netanyahu has, is the first Israeli prime minister to have a designated spokesperson for the Arab media, for the Arab world. So he does attach great importance to uh, communicating with, with the region. He has given two interviews to Arab networks until today. He has a Twitter account in Arabic. He has a Facebook account in Arabic. He has a website in Arabic. His uh, videos that we put on YouTube are translated into Arabic. So there, there is a huge effort that we're putting in order to get our message across and to communicate, not only to say what we think, but also to answer questions. So when you are uh, answering questions, what kind of questions you're facing from Arabs? Well, they're interested about Judaism. They don't know really what Judaism is. You know, uh, they read uh, hate books about Israel and about Jews, so they're interested because religion is part of life in the Arab world. It's not a, a private thing, it's, it's cultural. Uh, they're interested in what Israel does uh, economically, uh, scientifically, and so forth. They're interested, in, of course, in politics, what's happening inside Israel. So to the best of my ability, uh, I, I do answer. Uh, the main thing is that we are no longer the topic that they're talking about. They're talking to us. And that's, I think, the major breakthrough. It, it happened over a decade ago, but still, you know, this is an, an expanding effort. Uh, and I, I do think that it will uh, continue to develop. You know, um, one of the biggest uh, critics that uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has towards him is that he's speaking too much about the Iranian issue. He's not focusing, actually, in the region. And maybe it's about time to stop to talk to the Americans, and I'm just throwing an idea here, mm -hmm. to stop to talk about with the Americans about the Iranian issue and start talking with the, our world about the Iranian issue, because the Iranians are not um, the best friend, the BFF of, let's Absolutely. say, Saudi Arabia and, uh, and the Gulf states. You know, if there is something that Israel and the Arab world can agree on, it's Iran. Because Iran constitutes a threat not only to Israel, but also to the region. And all the uh, countries in the region, uh, and I put aside uh, Hezbollah and, and Syria, of course, yeah. uh, agree with Israel regarding Iran. So this message goes out in Arabic, and I think it's very well received. And these countries, you know, uh, do understand where, uh, where things are. The main thing is that I, I think that today most of the Arab countries, or I would say most of the Arab peoples, understand that Israel is not the enemy is not the enemy here. Israel is not the reason for the turmoil in the region. Uh, Israel might be a solution, Israel might be a friend, but definitely they do not consider us uh, an enemy. Uh, you know, generally speaking, of course, there are people who, who do consider Israel as an enemy, but I think that uh, the tide is changing. You know, we like to see ourselves here in I-24 News, an alternative to Al Jazeera. When you're going to Al Jazeera, yeah. uh, what is the atmosphere that you get from them uh, on the Iranian issue and on the peace process, for example? Well, you, you know that Al Jazeera uh, is not only a news outlet. It's also uh, an arm of Qatari foreign policy. It gets, it gets its orders from the emir. Um, so it has a different uh, or a certain view regarding uh, the region and regarding Israel. Uh, when it comes to uh, Hamas and Hezbollah, of course, Al Jazeera is pro-Hamas and pro-Hezbollah. So in cases that, you know, in, in news segments that uh, involve Hezbollah, of course, they are very pro the other side. But still, we are able to, to go on air, speak in fluent Arabic, and getting our message across. So we are part uh, of the story. Uh, and I think that uh, Arab networks including Al Jazeera, understand that uh, interviewing Israelis is uh, essential to cover the story uh, in, in a balanced or, let, let me say, a professional way. Do you think that in uh, 10 years, uh, let's say, let's try to look at the future in 10 years, do you think that the story will be the same, the storytelling of Israel will be the same? Well, things are changing in the region. No one can tell where things are going. Uh, I think Israel will stay as it is. If there's a constant in this region, I think you, know, you can put your bet on Israel. Everything else is changing. Uh, but uh, what will remain, ultimately, is Israel is a part of the Middle East. And in order to uh, make our case better, in order to expand our relations, we need to uh, advocate in Arabic as much as possible. And uh, as I said, there's a huge audience for this. Definitely, there is a huge audience uh, for that. Ophir uh, Gendelman, thank you very, very much for coming My to pleasure. our studio.
you're doing this interview in uh, English, not in Arabic this time. That's Thank you first. very much uh, you. for this. And we're going out. That's it. That's it for the news today, this week. We will be back on Sunday from the Jaffa Port and I-24 News. Have a great weekend and a great night.